Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless him. Let's bless him on this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's magnify him and glorify him. For he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. His name is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. Give me you. How many of us really do just say, God, give me you? Not give me the car, God. Not give me the wife, God. Not give me this thing or another thing. But God, I just want you. We have to understand that the gift of worship is God. Oh, come on, somebody. The gift of worship is God. And when we're able to just worship him in spirit and in truth, I promise you he's going to show up. Because he said, where two or three are joined together in my name, there I will be in the midst also. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So if somebody is looking for freedom on this morning, if you're looking for a breakthrough on this morning, if you're looking for God to move on this morning, I dare you right now, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just get to magnify him. Because he's worthy. Give me you. All that other stuff to you. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus. I come before you, Father God, asking you, Lord, that right now in this moment, in this very minute, Father God, that you hide me behind the cross. Let every word, every thought, everything be totally and only about you. Let every word that proceedeth out of my mouth be ordained by you for your people for such a time as this. Father God, we thank you. We bless you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Once again, we just praise God for allowing us to be here on this morning. Amen. Once again, I'd like to just give honor to our pastor and our first lady amen in their absence on this morning um it's good to know that they can go and be on vacation and do the other things that they have to do and know that ministry will still come forth amen 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 okay all right i'd like to give honor to my first lady amen reverend tanika williams amen Amen. Um, she had something else she had to do this morning. She said, you come first. She don't even know how much that uh, blessed my soul that, you know, and I didn't ask her anything. And she had something to do. She said, babe, I'm coming to be with you. Amen. Right. Amen. My rib, my better half to all the, the ministers. Uh, Reverend Rolanda, it's good to see you. Amen. On this morning, uh, Reverend Brown. That's my, my brother from another mother. Just thank him for all that he's done. He, you know, me and him be out here early. Amen. Early trying to get things uh, ready to go. Amen. Deacon and training deeds. I see you, my brother. Amen. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. Love that brother. Amen. Um, to, you know, the band. Thank you, uh, Brother Sean and, and, uh, Matthew and, and Mac, Mac man, William, amen. These brothers are constantly with us, amen. Uh, I'm going to thank my brother Desmond. Desmond is actually in Charlotte, patched in, making sure we got sound right now, amen. That's commitment, amen. 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 Once again, thank you, choir, um, the most, one of the most dedicated choirs I've ever been a part of. We ain't got but four or five members, but guess what? We always here. Amen. 
We're trying, and, and we work it. Amen. Amen. Just thankful again. Happy birthday again, Mama. Let's say that one more time because it's my Mama's 65th birthday. Amen. And I love my Mama. Happy Veterans Day to uh, uh, all our veterans and, and happy uh, Military Family Month to all of their families. Amen. And we just thank God for everyone in their respective places. Um, we read um, Hebrews 10. And we came out of verse uh, 29. Amen. We started, I'm sorry, we started with verse 32, Hebrews 10, uh, verse 32. And I'm going to, I want to read this out of the, uh, the New Living Translation. I'm going to start at verse 32. Amen. Amen. So verse 32 says, think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful. Pastor preached faithful last week. Amen. Even though it meant terrible suffering. Uh, sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and you were beaten. And sometimes you helped others who were suffering at the same time. And they were suffering the same thing. You suffered along with those who were thrown into jail. And, and when when uh, all you own was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. Verse 35 says, so don't throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need to know so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. For in a little while, somebody say a little while. A little while. So in a little while, the coming one will come and not delay. He's an on-time God. Somebody ought to give him praise for that. And my righteous ones will live by faith. <laughs> but my righteous ones will live by faith. I'm going to say that again. But my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. But we are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Amen. If I had to give a title for this message, it would simply be, we will not retreat. I'm going to say that again. We will not retreat. Amen. We're... We, we, we're we're observing Veterans Day, and a lot of our veterans have been through many, many battles. Amen. And we have some veterans here that are in another army. Amen. The army of the Lord. Amen. And, and, and you've been through some things, and you've been through some battle scars. And, and, and what happens is sometimes we get to the point where we get weary in battle, and, 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 and we want to kind of just turn back. Amen. We want to let it go. The word retreat means to withdraw from enemy forces as a result of their superior power or after a defeat. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, we will not retreat. We will not retreat. Simply put, this day and age as you look. Uh, on the news and you and you 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 sometimes are on your job and you are going through different things it's a constant warfare that is going on daily that we sometimes get to a point to where we are uh, tired of war and we begin to look at those things that come to us in our lives and we think they that have superior power over us 
we look at our situations and it's more than I can bear. We, we look at our illnesses and it's more than I can handle. We look at our finances and, and it seems like we get to the point to where we want to retreat and we want to back up because we don't think we have the power to overcome. We get to a point to where we look at that enemy, whatever that we think, because we're going to go somewhere with that, whatever we think that enemy is, and we begin to look at how big that Goliath is, that Philistine is, and we think we cannot defeat it because we begin to lose a little bit of that faith, a little bit of that swagger. Now, if we look at the verse, verse says, uh, we are not to forget what we've already been through. And we have to continue to have that confidence, that confident faith that our God is going to continue to bring us out no matter what it is, our circumstances may say. Your circumstances may say, I don't have enough money to pay this bill, so I'm just going to quit. Your circumstance may say, I don't have the will to go on, so I'm just going to stop. Your circumstance may tell you that it's time for me to shut it down. But I need you to tell the enemy on today, we will not, we will not, we shall not retreat. Because we're in a war. We're in a war. And to simply put, we will constantly be in warfare. But in order for us to really grasp all this, it's a few things that we've got to understand and we've got to know. The first thing is, you got to know your enemy. Hard to go into battle with something and you don't know what it is. Okay? So, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12 and 12, 4, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. See, here's the thing. We put... We put, hallelujah, natural enemies in the place of spiritual ones. Let me say that again. We put natural enemies in the place of spiritual ones. See, here's the thing. You think your boss is your enemy. You think... Your job is your enemy. You think the light bill is your enemy. You think that person talking about you is your enemy. You think that sickness you may be going through is your enemy. You think that everything that's coming at you, every situation, every circumstance is your enemy. But the Bible says that our enemies are not flesh and blood. In other words, they're not natural things. And we try to fight supernatural wars with natural reactions. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We try to fight supernatural wars with natural reactions. Not understanding that when Jesus died on the cross, he took everything that could kill you, everything that could mess with you, and he conquered the death and the grave. Right. Oh, somebody ought to get excited about that. Right. My father says he owns all the riches and glory so he can take care of your finances. My God says by his stripes we are healed so he can take care of your illness. My God says that you're more than a conqueror if you just believe in Christ Jesus. But we put natural things as our enemy. 
And we don't realize that God is trying to get us to understand. I don't need you to look at the natural. I need you to look at the spiritual. Because in the natural, things are going to happen. Sometimes we're going to get sick. Sometimes we're going to be without money. Sometimes things are going to just happen. But if you believe in God and that God raised Jesus from the dead and that he overcame death and the grave and that in the end we'll have the victory, you've already won. Amen. So technically, there really ain't no battle. But then why are we trying to retreat? Because, see, it happens that those things are things that we see in the natural. We can only deal with what we know in the natural. Because I see this thing coming at me. I'm looking, for, looking at it in a natural sense. And I'm not looking at it in a spiritual sense. Amen? In the spirit... We've got to know what we are truly fighting for. Why do we fight? Why do we have a war? What is it that the enemy, our supernatural enemy, wants that is so precious that he'll take us through some natural things? Or be allowed to take us through some natural things in order to get us up in a spiritual level. First Timothy 6, 12 and 12 says, fight the good fight of faith. I'm going to say that again. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In other words, here's what I'm saying to you, people of God. If the enemy can take your faith. If the enemy can make you not believe, if the enemy can make your natural cause you to just look at it naturally and not supernaturally, then he's able to get to you. He's able to overpower you. And then he's able to make you fall back. See, if David didn't have the faith, when he looked at this big old Philistine, David would have been like, oh, because everybody else did what? They retreated. They fell back because they looked at the giant in the natural and not in the supernatural. But David knew the God that he served. He had faith in the God that he served. So he knew that God would give him away. And sometimes it's the simple things, y'all. He just gave him a sleeve shot and some stones, and he had the faith enough to know that if I go attack. See, in warfare, true warfare, as Christians, if we remember, we either need to do one or two things. We have to stand and wait on God. Oh, we got to be on the offensive. See, here's the thing. It's time for the people of God to go on the offensive. It's time for us to take back those things that the enemy has tried to take from us. It's time for us to take back our children. It's time for us to take back our communities. It's time for us to take back our churches. It's time for us to take back. And then we've got to be on the offensive. How are you on the offensive? The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. How many people do we really got down on their knees beginning to pray to God that he's able to continue to do what he says he's going to do? But no, what we want to do is we want to talk about it. But we don't want to be about it. We want to talk about it. All the things that we see going on in the world. But... How many times do we pray about it? We talk about the preachers and the things that they do, and some of them are in the wrong, but do we actually pray for them? 
We talk about all the killing and all this stuff that's going on. But are we actually on our knees saying, God, I plead the blood of Jesus? Because sometimes you got to go old school warfare. It's spiritual war. And where are my prayer warriors at? What are you fighting for? You're fighting for your faith. Your faith. Because if the enemy can get you to not believe, if the enemy can get you to say, God ain't real, if the enemy can get you to say, this is more than my God can handle, if the enemy can get you to say, so in this set of scripture, what was happening is that the um, people, they were going through some stuff. They were going through some things. He had to go back and he had to remind them. And I like the, 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 the amplified version. But remember the earlier days when after being spiritually enlightened, you patiently endured a great conflict of suffering. See, there's a lot of people who have been through a lot of things. But let me tell you something. You're still here. You don't understand. I don't look like what I've been through. But I'm still here. You don't understand. You don't look like what you've been through. But you're still here. People don't know sometimes your struggle. People don't know sometimes your pain. But you got to understand that you suffered. And God has brought you out. Why? Because you're still here. And if you're still here, there's a purpose. Sometimes, by being made spectacles, whoo, sometimes they talk about you. Whoo, sometimes they criticize you. Sometimes they told you you wasn't going to make it. Sometimes they told you you wasn't going to be nothing. You weren't going to amount to anything. Then it says, publicly exposed to insults and distress. Some people, they talked about you publicly. They lied on you. They scandalized your name. But guess what? You're still here. Tell your neighbor, we will not retreat. Woo. And we've had to even sometimes, in the midst of our struggle, become the companions of those uh, who were so treated. In other words, they were treated just like you. We've told you many, many times the things that you go through in your life are not about you. The Bible says in all things, somebody shout all. all. In all things, God shall get the glory. So you being able to go through your situation, God gets the glory. For you to be able to go through your cancer, God gets the glory. For you to be able to be here on today, God gets the glory. For you to be able to keep standing in the midst of not feeling like it, God gets the glory. As long as you're allowing him to get the glory. And it says, well, you showed uh, 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 sympathy. And a deep concern for those who were in prison. And you joyfully accepted the unjust. I'm reading for the Amplified Version. The unjust seizure of your belongings. The enemy came and tried to take everything that you had. He might have messed with your car. He might have messed with your mortgage. He might have messed with your husband. He might have messed with your wife. He might have messed with those things that you held dear to your heart. But, but let me explain something to you. God never does anything without a purpose. So sometimes God will allow those things to be taken from you so that you can only say, God, give me you. Everything else can wait. God, I need you. God, I want you. God, this is about you. Amen. 
and says, 60 years of the law gave, and the confiscation of your property, conscious of the fact that you have a better possession and a lasting one prepared for you in heaven. Right. You know, we won't talk about heaven too much no more. All right. But Shirley Caesar said, Shirley Caesar said, heaven, oh heaven, I'm going there. Right. One day, when this life is over, I want to hear my master say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't know when my last breath is going to be, but I want it to be that when God sees my face, he says, come on in and enter into your rest. We got something else besides this natural stuff that we have here. The Bible says heaven and earth all pass away, but my word. We almost done. And it says, do not therefore fling away your, listen to this, fearless confidence. Somebody shout fearless. fearless. Somebody shout fearless. fearless. In other words, you ain't got nothing to be afraid of. The simple fact of it is, you can take my money, you can take my job, you can take this, you can take that, you can take all the materialistic. But as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. And that's the faith of it. If you can believe that in your heart, that as long as I got King Jesus, I don't necessarily need all that stuff. Because he'll be my provider, he'll be my healer, he'll be my sustainer, he'll be my joy. In the time of sorrow, he'll be my happiness when I'm weak, my strength. Huh. And it says that confidence, that fearless confidence, fearless confidence, Woo. for it has a glorious and a great reward. For you have need of patience. Endure. Some of y'all are going through stuff on your jobs. Some of you are going through stuff in your marriages. You're going through stuff in your finances. If you just look at our world, we're going through stuff. I get sick of turning on the news and hearing people arguing about stuff that ain't got much to do about nothing. Well, we don't really care about people, but we don't, we don't care about, I'm going to go to the kids, but we care about trying to make a point because we want to be right the simple fact of it is the only way you're going to be right is if you're following this because this is the right way Amen. Amen. you got to have patience to endure it in other words to bear up under difficult circumstances without compromise Say that again. To bear up under difficult circumstances without compromising. I'm not compromising my faith. Enemy, you can throw at me what you want to, but I still got faith in God. Enemy, you can say what you want to say, but I still got faith in God. Enemy, you can hurt my body, but guess what? As long as I can wave my hands, and even when I can't do that, I'll give a groan. Because he said he knows my groanings, even when nobody else understands him. So somebody today ought to just wave your hand and confuse the enemy right now. And say, God, I praise you. Despite what I'm going through, I got the endurance, and I won't compromise on my belief and my faith. All right. Here's the thing. Last week, Pastor Kemp preached on being a faithful servant. Faithful to those things that God has called you to do. I'm going to add a little bit to that. We have to be a faithful servant. Oh. I'm going to say that right. one more time. You can be faithful, which means you're here doing this, you're here doing that. I'm, I'm constantly doing the work. But do you, do you know you can do the work of God and not necessarily believe in what you're doing? But what we do, we have to be faith-filled. I'm going to say that again. Faithful, faith, full of faith. Because that's what the enemy wants. 
That's what you're fighting for. Again, if he could take that fearless confidence away from you, then he can destroy you. For you got to have that patience, need, endurance without compromising. So that when you have carried out the will of God, you may receive and enjoy to the full what is promised. For yet, in a very a little while, he who is coming will come, and there will not be late. There, there will not he and there will not delay. But my righteous one, the one justified by faith, shall live by faith. Let me say that again. My righteous one, the one justified by faith, shall live by faith, representing a uh, 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 respecting man's relationship to God and trusting him. And if he draws back, the Amplified Version says, if he shrinks from fear, if you begin to shrink from your fear, your fear, your fear. Kirk Franklin wrote a song and said, hello, fear. You don't live here no more. So you need to tell your fear. You need to tell your insecurities. You need to tell those things that are hindering you. Bye-bye. So long. Farewell. That fearless confidence that God has given me, that's what I'm going to live by. Lastly, you got to know what you're working with. <laughs> Say that again. You got to know what you working with. I didn't say working with. I said working with. <laughs> know what you're working with. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, 6, uh, 4 through 6 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not calm, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, for casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. In other words, the weapons that you have are not carnal. They're not of this earth because you can walk in a supernatural gift where you can say to that mountain, mountain, be ye moved. You can say to that thing, I declare that you turn around because why? You got your God, your God, he's backing you, he's keeping you, he's there for you, he's working with you, he's working through you, he's for God. And if I got God, ah, if I got God, the Bible says that if God be for you, who, who, not that sickness, who. Not the money, who? Not the devil himself, who? Who? Not your boss, who? Not that person that hates you, who? Because if God is for me, I ain't got to worry about retreat. I ain't got to worry about bowing down and drawing back. I'm about to go on the offensive. So somebody on today, you better tell your enemy, you can throw at me what you want to, but I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. I'm going to press forward. I'm going to keep moving until the end, until I see my Savior's face. And he says, well done, not good and faithful servant. I'm going to keep moving. I won't retreat. I won't give up. In the immortal words of P. Diddy, I thought I told you that we won't stop. Somebody ought to give God praise. Right now, you have some people who are They're going through things. 
We have folk that are going through sicknesses. They're going through depression. Who are being just almost like pressed on every side. And right now in your mind, you're thinking, I have no way out. But what you have to do right now is you got to look your enemy right in the eye. And say, despite what it is I'm going through, I ain't turning back now. I've come too far to turn back now. I've, I've gone through too much to turn back now. But then you got to have a confidence to say, if he did it before, then he'll do it again. If he's done it before, he'll do it again. If he healed me before, he'll heal me again. If he brought me out of this before, he'll bring me out again. I pray it to me another way, a way that I don't know about. But guess what? I ain't got to know that devil. I got to know my God. And if I know my God, then I know that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can ask for things. He's able to conquer when I can't conquer. He's able to heal when I can't heal. He's able to keep me when I don't feel like being kept. God just sent me by this morning to tell you don't give up. Don't give in. Somebody right now, you want the, the brink of your breakthrough. It said that it's darkest before the dawn. I bet a prophetic you'll tell somebody, whether you're here in the sanctuary, the sanctuary or you looking out on Facebook or wherever, whatever it is, whenever you hear this, if you can just make it through the night, joy, peace, love, all those things that God has promised you is coming in the morning light. I need you to just hold on. Don't turn back. I need you not to retreat. I need you to either stand and let the Lord fight your battle. And then we got to go on the offensive. We got to tell the enemy, guess what? We coming into your camp and we taking everything that you stole from us. We are taking everything that you thought you got. I want it back. I want it back. I want it back. it back we're not going to retreat soldiers of the living God we won't retreat and at this moment if you have not enlisted into this army huh, it's, it's time for you to get in because this army has a benefits package like no other. This army, you won't get to retire until he calls you home to glory. But that's all right, because when he does call me home, I got a mansion waiting for me. So when he calls me home, every day will be like Sunday. When he calls me home, the Sabbath shall have no end. When he calls me home, But there's a benefits package like no other because no matter what it is you go through, every single thing that you have to endure is there to make you stronger. The simple fact of it is, is that God will take the things that seem crazy 
and he will make it so that it builds you to withstand what you got to withstand. It makes you so that you're able to have the capacity to help somebody else. It's built, the Bible says, all. All. Somebody shout all. All things work together for the good to them who are called according to his purpose. If you're still here, you're called according to his purpose. So everything is working for your good. A lot of people in Hebrews, the doors of the church are open. If you haven't enlisted, come on in. Some of you, some of us, have decided that we're going to take an early retirement without God saying so. Remember, I just told you, you don't retire from this army until you go home and look. And God says, I need you back on the battlefield. I need you back in this fight. Because that little piece of you is the missing piece that can change millions. That little smile that you may give is that missing thing that may restore somebody's hope. That little hug that you give. He says, and despite what you've done, I need you back. He says, I'm married to the backslider. It's time for you to, uh, tear up the retirement papers and come on back in. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. We, especially now people of God, we cannot retreat. There's so many people out there that are hurting. There's so many people out there that are going through who don't know our God. We cannot shrink our God because people don't necessarily like if you preach the unadulterated word of truth. The simple fact of it is, the Bible says, he said it in his word, if you shrink, if you turn back, if you shrink because of your fear, he said, my soul whew, has no delight in you. Mm. In other words, don't be scared. Because my God is bigger than any problem. Our God is bigger than any situation. Our God says I will take care of you. He's there for you. I won't shrink. I won't turn back. We will not retreat. Come on, give God a hand, clap of praise, amen. Mm, mm, mm. We will not retreat. <laughs> I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm listening to Reverend Williams preach, and I'm, I'm, I'm hearing him say, we will not retreat. And in the back of my mind, the Holy Spirit is talking to me and he's telling me, he says, our God is a living God. He was living before he even spoke anything into existence. And he's going to be there after we go on to glory. And God is telling us that you can't retreat from a fight that you've already won. That's an impossibility. You can't run from a battle that you've already won. You see, God has already defeated the devil. There is nothing else we need to defeat. The only thing that we have on this earth 
that we consider ourselves defeated by are things of this natural nature. And we are not natural creatures. We are spiritual creatures having a natural experience. So this is not where we belong. This is not our home. This is not the place we belong in. If, if you feel like everything in your world is just crumbling down around you, let me tell you, there is a God in heaven. There is a Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's waiting for you to give your life over to him. All you have to do is confess to him. Tell him, say, you don't even have to recall all of the things that you've done wrong in your life because we know that we are all sinners. All you have to do is say, Lord, I am a sinner. I'm a sinner and I want to turn from my wicked ways. I want to turn myself over to you. I know that you died on the cross for me as the ultimate sacrifice. Nobody had to kill a, a, a lamb for me because you were the lamb. You were the ultimate sacrifice because you gave yourself up for me and you defeated the devil. You defeated death. You rose on the third day to claim your position at the right hand of God for me. That's all you have to do is give yourself over to God and he will accept you where you are. You don't have to wait until tomorrow. You don't have to wait until you got it all together. You don't have to wait until you, you, you have the right person. No, 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 no. All you have to do is take yourself to Jesus Christ and claim that he is your Lord and Savior. And he will accept you where you are. And he will love you. No matter what it is you've done. Have Reverend Williams come back up here and he's going to dismiss us. But before he dismisses us, I ask you, turn yourself over to Jesus. The package that he has for you when you enlist in his army is beyond anything you'll ever imagine. To be absolutely honest, it is out of this world. And that's what matters. Amen. We can't retreat now. It's time for us to go back on the offensive. So wherever you are, just understand God's got you. I like the way River Rolon just put that. There's no need to retreat from a battle you already won. You just got to believe that you won it. Amen. Walk in your victory. Walk into your victory. Step into that thing that God has called you to do. And know, and know that he will, if he started a good work, Reverend Brown, if he started a good work, he will finish what he started. Amen. We thank you for joining us on today. We hope that you got something out of this on today. Now, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of you. Hence now and forevermore. And the people of God said amen, amen, and amen. You are now dismissed. And perfect come from you we are a bible believing bible teaching bible preaching church 
We are Agape Fellowship, a church where love is what we do. Pastor David Camp Sr. and the Agape Church family welcomes everyone to our sanctuary for 10 a.m. Sunday morning worship service and for Tuesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. You can also continue to join us virtually every Sunday and Tuesday. For those joining us inside of the sanctuary on the first and third Sundays and Tuesdays, we will observe the three W's. The following ministries will remain virtual. Start each morning with prayer on the daily prayer call at 9 a.m. Receive your weekly soul food with Rev. Troy Roland for Sunday School at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings via YouTube. There are multiple ways to worship with us through giving. Follow us at Agape Fellowship BC on Facebook and Agape Fellowship MBC on YouTube. For more information, visit our website at www.agapefellowshipchurch.org. Thank you for joining us. We will see you soon.